In late 2011, we protected the Dennis Hastert farm with the conservation easement. It's more than 400 acres of beautiful bluff land right along the Mississippi River, just a short distance north of Prairie du Chien. And it's got great views of the Mississippi River Valley, uh, incredible wildlife habitat. There's some rare species there. And uh, so it's a, both a working farm and areas for wildlife to continue to use and enjoy. We really appreciate the conservation leadership demonstrated by the Hasterts uh, to donate a conservation easement on such a large farm and to make a commitment to keep that farm intact and not have it split up into little parcels for housing development, um, to not lose the wildlife habitat, to make sure that there are good farming practices there. And then Mississippi Valley Conservancy will be around to continue to ensure that their wishes for their farm are carried out in perpetuity. And that's the great thing about a conservation easement. The land stays in private ownership, and yet uh, they can, you know, give the land to their kids. Uh, you know, they can, the Hastards can give the land to their son, or they could sell the land, but the, the point is that the land will stay intact and remain as a working farm and wildlife habitat. The land will stay on the tax rolls, continue to be owned and managed by the Hastards. They can still use the land exclusively for their own purposes, which is a nice benefit of a conservation easement, and yet we know that uh, the habitat and the farm are protected. Of course, Dennis Hastert is former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. He was a, a, a Republican member of Congress. And so it, that, that's one of the great things about conservation easements. It's voluntary conservation. It's a very nonpartisan approach to conservation. It's one of the few things that in today's highly charged political climate, people from both sides of the aisle can agree on, both Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives. It's uh, it's. It's really a wonderful tool for conservation. It's not about regulating land use. It's not about telling people what to do with their land. It's about private landowners exercising their private property rights to ensure that their dreams and their wishes for their land are carried forward even after they're no longer there to take care of their property. Many people invest a lifetime taking care of a farm or other piece of rural land and they don't want to see that their lifetime of work destroyed, bulldozed up. Uh, and so a conservation easement is a tool that they can use to keep the land in private ownership and yet ensure that the essential rural character of the land is maintained. And you know, with the enhanced tax incentives for donated conservation easements, that's something that's incredibly popular among, amongst both Republicans and Democrats. Um, there's uh, new legislation being proposed that has a majority of Republican and Democratic members of Congress supporting it. I think there's more than 300 members of Congress supporting this bipartisan legislation to ensure that there are enhanced tax incentives to encourage people to provide incentives for people to, to make good use of their land and make sure that there are good practices for the land and that the land is permanently protected. The other, uh, an, another unique aspect of conservation easements compared to other conservation programs, many conservation programs are temporary in nature. So with the Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP, you know, landowners enter into a contract that may last for a period of years, say 10 years, for example. After the contract is up, the landowner is free to do whatever they want with the property. So they may have been receiving payments over a period of a decade to conserve the land and provide good habitat, but as soon as the contract's up, uh, all that good habitat work can be undone. And in contrast, the conservation easement is permanent in nature. So it isn't something like, we're gonna take care of the land today and destroy it tomorrow. Uh, the Mississippi Valley Conservancy will be there in perpetuity to ensure that the landowner's wishes are carried out. And um, 
That's why it's, it's so popular amongst people all across the political spectrum. And so it's, it's especially pleasing when we can work with someone who was a leader in the United States Congress and to be able to see their land protected. What a great example for other landowners. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, the Hastert Farm is pretty darn close to what the farm known as Seldom Seen Farm, owned by Ben Logan and the subject of Ben Logan's book, uh, The Land Remembers, The Story of a Farm and Its People, which is just a really heartwarming story about uh, this family growing up, taking care of their farm, taking care of their land, and wanting to make sure that their land is, is well used and not abused. And so to have that example um, of that seldom seen farm protected with the conservation easement, and then just a few miles away, Dennis Hastert protecting his family farm with the conservation easement. We're very pleased to work with those landowners. I am Abby Church, conservation specialist here, and I cover our southern counties. And what a lot of people notice when they drive down the Great River Road, Highway 35, um, you've got your bluffs on one side, Mississippi River on the other side, and it's easy for anyone with an interest in prairies to drive along and look up and say, wow, there's a great prairie there, there's a great prairie there, all along um, that whole corridor, Grant County on up, all the way up to Buffalo County. So over the years, we kind of had our eye on a number of the good prairies and um, prairies are exciting for us because according to the DNR's Wildlife Action Plan that's a globally rare natural community of what was here historically today less than a tenth of a percent remains so it's very very rare and the community itself is rare but on top of that you've got your species that are rare as well. Um, back in 2008 a landowner contacted me in Crawford County and she said she had some prairie um, had some forest, was interested in working with us on her land. So myself and the DNR regional ecologist Armin Bartz headed down to the property and not only was it an awesome prairie but we found a population of prairie ringneck snakes um, which are a state species of concern and also the state threatened cherry stone drop snail. Now the cherry stone drop is typically found in cooler moist habitats whereas the ringneck snake is more of a dry habitat species so that's a sign that the overall property um, from the bluff tops down to the valley bottoms is a good diverse property. And as we're hiking around, we said, wow, who owns that adjacent property? That's good stuff too. Um, and I came back to the office and promptly looked in the plat map, saw that the land was owned by Denny and Jean Hastert and sent them a letter. Um, one thing led to another and the project with the original landowner um, that we went to fell through and ended up being purchased by Denny and Jean Hastert as an addition onto their property. Um, and then this year, I sent them another letter letting them know that their, uh, their land is still a high priority. If they're interested in working with us, just give us a call. And sure enough, they called. And not only were interested in protecting a portion of their property, but they wanted to protect the whole 403 acres uh, development is restricted property-wide, no mining, no subdivision, and we can also work with them to get grants to do land management and restoration. Anytime we do a conservation easement with a landowner, we do a property report, which is a photographic documentation of every corner on the property, every habitat, every community. So I walked the entire property and found not only did they have the, the few prairies that we knew about just from driving by from the road, but Every little south and west facing ridgetop knob had a dry prairie community full of native species on it. Um, literally hundreds of different species were cataloged on their property. And that was just from one, one day's walk through. So it's very, very diverse. Um, and in addition to preserving the prairies, the ridgetop has working farmland. And that was something that's uh, also preserved, that they can continue to own. Um, and rent out the farm fields as cropland in perpetuity. And the other exciting thing is their plans are to continue to use and enjoy the land 
and they also have two kids and their son loves the property and had the opportunity to come out while I was there and say how great he thinks this is that this special property will be preserved in perpetuity um, long after he's gone or his the entire family's gone. You know, we protected the Dennis Hastert farm with a permanent conservation easement, and obviously the Hastert family is kind of a high-profile family, uh, a lot more high-profile than uh, the typical landowner we're working with in southwestern Wisconsin since Mr. Hastert was uh, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. And of course, we were able to get some really nice publicity for this um, conservation action. Uh, it, you know, we had an article appear in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and so we don't get that kind of statewide news coverage every day, um, but it's a wonderful way to get the word out to other landowners about this great conservation tool where they can keep their land in private ownership and yet ensure that it's protected permanently. There are so many landowners who just don't know those options exist or they don't understand what a conservation easement is. So anytime that we can get the word out through the media about how this works and have these landowners as examples to their neighbors and to other people around Wisconsin uh, is just a, a great opportunity to spread the word about voluntary conservation.